Yeah, yeah, this morning. Yeah, yeah. Very much pizza. <laughs> Look at all that pizza. I know. Come pizza. on. Yes, did you try it? No. Uh, Why not? Vegetarian. No. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, I'm gonna recommendations <laughs> We still don't know who they are. Still don't know. This is the only thing she's passed out for us. Yes. Read it when I was out. Yes, it looks like it's just definition. And um I wanted to remind you, I think you guys knew, but this is the whole meeting's being recorded. Um Starting now, which means they missed my good joke. <laughs> so they tried to record earlier, but now we're starting. So, um, you know, if you want to do anything with your hair or whatever, this is a good time. Um, and, I, uh, and that way we'll be able to make sure we remember what everybody said. So, as I said, um, so I've just given you a copy of the draft rule. Is there anybody who didn't get one? I have a couple extras, but I think it must be whoever's not here. So, um, and did Jane, Anthony, and Jeff get that one? Yes, everyone was sent it uh, by email just that. Okay. Um, so, um, as I said, we'll just go through point by point and we'll um, see where, you know, what we're, what we're willing to just say uh, looks <clears throat> good, pass, or, you know, no comment, and then where we want to make comments. And if you do make comments, if you could make them uh, plus Delta question or idea. So I'm assuming, I'm guessing that 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4, probably nobody has any comments on. Am I right about that? Thank you. Why don't you take a minute, read through it? It just is a, it sets out the authority. <clears throat> So Jane, Anthony, and Jeff were just reading section one, the authority, one, one point one to one point four, and making sure that nobody has any comments. Yep. Uh, one point four. I shall adopt a rule regarding the pursuit of coyote with the aid of dogs, either for this or that. Okay. And I don't think they want to say that. Both. Okay, so that this is a delta. So I said you play. And you're suggesting the 1.4. 1. 1.4, 4, then there's an either there. And it looks like there's a choice between the two. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> um, that's great. And I should have said, if I have to realize, if that helped me realize something I forgot. What I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is capture all the comments. And if there are areas that we agree or disagree or can come to consensus, that's great. If not, I think we'll just, you know, we want to make sure that all the comments are collected. Um, so, all right, yeah. that is completely not clear. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Anything else under one point under one? I'm going to look for a, uh, your thumb if you're ready to if you're ready to pass on everything to do with one. Russ, are you good? With, yes. Uh, yes. Okay. And, and Jade, Anthony, and Jeff, are you guys? You could just show me a thumb if you're good to go with everything that you're fine with one. Jeff is. No, oh, that's Anthony. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Dan and Jeff, I guess I'm gonna need your oh, I see another one. I'm assuming yes. You also can use your little icons too. I mean, you probably have a little thumbs up icon in there. Okay, so moving on to two. This is another one I'm assuming you don't have comments about. <laughs> but um, am I right about that? Or what about what comments do you have?
Good thumbs up for two. Yes. That's your favorite too. Okay. Um, you know what? It's really hard for me to know um, Shane, Anthony, and Jeffrey, if you guys have comments. So you might have to verbally say, when we're not going around like that, you might have to say something. We'll see. Hopefully, I can see. I just can't see Shane and Jeff's thumbs. So now that brings us to 3.0 definitions. And um, I don't know, there's some of these that I'm assuming we are going to be happy about, and there's some that I'm thinking we're not. So, and this is just me guessing, so I don't know. So, um, so why don't, we'll go through them one by one. And, and what I'm going to look for is your, is your thumb, if you're fine to, to pass on. So, for example, um, 3.1 is about what we mean by a company. So, it, to be clear, these are definitions that will appear in regulation. So, some of it might not make a heck of a lot of sense out there in the open all by itself, um, but most will. Okay, so yeah, well, let's make sure we all are. Yeah, so, looking at 3.1a um, and 3.1b, um, to me, that didn't seem like more people were going to have comments about, but. If you're good to pass on 3.1. Save our energy for later when I think you're going to have a lot of comments. Then, uh, good. I'm looking for thumbs if you're good to go on 3.1. Just a quick question. Yes. Uh, was the language taken from like the bear hound regs for a company? Not sure. That Did would help. Okay. Them? Yes, they were. A lot of it. Okay. Okay. So we're good on 3.1. Yes, 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 yes. Not quite yet. Is there just a question on B, but we'll come back to the company. No, this, this the, the moment is right now. So. Yeah, no, it's not because we don't know the context this is being used in. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Sorry, I no, no, no. Don't need to be. You're not being anything. This is this is the conversation we're having, and it's great. Thank you. Okay, so we'll loop back to that. Um, so I'm just guessing. The, I'm going to sort of see if I can lump these up and guess. I'm assuming you guys are going to have comments about 3.5. I'm thinking you don't about 3.2, 3.3, and 3.4. But am I so? I'm just trying to speed this along. Does anybody have comments about any of those? So we're going to look for a thumb on 3.1, 3.2, and 3.3. Both good on that. Okay, 3.4. There's still a lot of dog or dogs. So That's 3.5. Right. 3.4, commissioner. <laughs> I doubt we have any problem with that one. <laughs> What's <laughs> Okay, so 3.5. We all agree about what commissioner means. Um, control of dog or dogs. So let me give you, has everyone had a minute? Have you been reading this or should we want to take a little minute to read this one? I think it's up on the screen here as well. Um, and we could go around with like thoughts on that one if you have any. But, you know, I'd like to guess on that. So it's up on the screen. Yeah, like, did you guys read it? Yeah. Is there any way to make it bigger? I, I'd go ahead and make it real big because all we need to see right now is 3.5. Yeah. Can you guys read that now in the back? Okay, so. Um, would this require both a GPS caller and a an e caller? Okay. Essentially, yes. One. <clears throat> the only reason I say it that way, Brennan, is because there are some callers that are dual function. Okay. 
So one or the other, it either has to have dual function or you have to have one of each is the intent. <coughs> so Chris, why don't we start with you? Do you have any comments about 3.5 <coughs> all of the other dogs? Static destroyer. Okay. Brenda, anything? Should I do um, can I ask you guys for a second? You, yeah. Did you <laughs> capture questions like Brenda's question or is that not? Yeah. Okay. Um, so your question, Brenda, was um, can you say it again? Sorry. Sure. Um, is both a GPS collar and an e collar required? They serve you know, two very different functions. Okay. That's helpful for, for us to know if we need to tweak the language. Got it. That's good. Um, did you have another comment right now, or usually I'm just going to take? Um, like so it. I'm not quite sure at this. Point, are we getting into uh, objections to the definition, or is that? I think this is going to be the real big one that I think a lot of us are going to probably. Uh, I don't know if this is the right time to talk about it. You can always come back to it if it appears in the actual regulation and it's clarity. So you're saying yes, go ahead and talk about objections. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if you want to say one, and then we'll go around, and if you have another one, we'll come back. Sure. Um, I guess just plainly stated, it's our position that GPS and e-collars does not meet the definition of control of dogs. So that's an insufficient definition. <clears throat> And Josh, yeah, may I ask a really quick question and then do a delta? Um, sure. I just want. I just wondered: is an e-collar um, vocal? Is that can you speak just a little more loudly? It, does an e-collar mean that a vocal command can be made? Is that what that is, or they're both GPS? You're saying what is an? E it's like a shock. I don't know any that are controlled by voice. They're all okay. controlled. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, um, for Delta, I would just add that there be visual control of some kind. Visual control? Yes. Okay. Um, Jane. I don't think I have anything to add. Okay. And Joanne, I would just echo comments about not seeing GPS as adequate control of the dogs. Okay, good. Um, Chris, Justin, Jay, any comments about 3.5? Um, just reading it now, I just, it's, this is a new document for me. Um, <laughs> But we'll come back around again if you want. Anthony, well, about yes, I do have a comment. I, I just I don't think that training or con training collars are adequate for controlling dogs. I think so. We've they gotten could, GPS and e collars are insufficient to control dogs. Is that what she's saying also? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. We got it. Thank you. Um, I know it's going to be hard for you because you're not able to see uh, the flip charts. But um, but but maybe you know something like taking notes as people make their comments. I know it's harder in a hybrid meeting. So start. Thanks for your patience with that, um, Anthony. Um, Any I, comments at this time? It's fine if you don't. Well, I guess I'm I'm in disagreement that I think there's those collars are sufficient if the dogs are properly trained. Um, I know I can tone my dogs a mile away. And with a horn, they will be back at my truck if they can hear the horn with the tone. So collars and horns are two different things, aren't they? Am I getting? I'm you said you had a horn. So They're used horn. in coordination <laughs> um, together. If if a dog is trained properly with a horn, and they hear that horn, and you tone them. 
they will they will pretty much come back to that horn. Um, and Jack. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. The only way that you can control your dog, what you consider control of your dog, would be on a leash. So we know that's not going to be possible for this scenario. So the only other way that there's control of the dog would be in sight. Your dog will look you in the eye for a command. Yep. And just like Anthony just said, pretty much come back to the truck. But that's a mile away and he can't see you. So the handler has no idea what the dog is doing. The dog has no idea what he's supposed to be doing. But if the dog can see you, he will know exactly what he's supposed to be doing if the handler is in control of his dog. In sight is the only way other than a leash. So if it's not in sight, then it's on a leash. Okay. Um, can I say one more thing about this? If you guys, because you guys are all experts and I'm not, if you see me capturing something wrong, will you help me to get it right? Because these notes are what's going to become the notes. So I just need anybody's help since I'm not that this familiar. Um, but the control is is a word that's in play here. We all have different ideas on how what control is. <clears throat> if you're able to hunt with a hound, he cannot be on a leash because there's nobody in here that can run 17 miles an hour all day long. And a, a hound will chase a bear all day long if the bear runs. And the coyotes do too. All right. So I'm saying the control with Tracking device, GPS tracking devices. So you think the way it's worded here is okay? GPS and and training collars, yes. So collars are sufficient if dogs are. Can I say here. something? If, if they're trained from a puppy up through, yes, they're definitely enough. Okay. It's it, it's you can take dogs and take them off a bear track and have them come back to you if you train them that way. Okay. If you. David. Good. I'm going to go back around in case anybody I has something to pick up there. Oh, did I miss something, Jeff? Yeah, Jeff was like a dog. Did you have a <clears throat> Yes. Yes. Hello. Yes. I've talked, I talked to, had extensive conversation with a dog trainer who's done it her whole entire life. She lives in Cornwall and she says the same exact thing. The only way you control your dog, your dog has to be in sight looking at you for the next command. Yep. Okay, so I captured that. I wrote down, since you can't say dogs can only be controlled by leash or with visual command, insight is key if not on a leash. So that's what I wrote. Does that sound okay? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. Um, we're gonna loop back around just in case there's anything else to do with 3.5 and then we'll um, see, we can keep moving. But I think 3.6 is getting fine. So 3.5, any other? Lots. If, if not, that's fine. We've got lots more to talk about. So this isn't your last chance by any means. Thank you. So you're past are you I mean there's a so I think again, my opinion is that this is going to be the one that's going to require the most amount of, of discussion and debate. So are we going to come back to this so people can share um, information and, and perspectives and because this yeah, uh, um, I think that, let me, and again, I'm trying to make visual. I'm trying to have insight linkage over here because I, I believe that what we're trying to do right now is at least get clarity about the definitions. And then this topic about control will be part of the rule. We'll talk about it later, right? Mm -hmm. Did you agree with that? Yes. Okay, good. So, and and if at the end, it, you know, we have gone through and you haven't gotten the safety point, well, we certainly, this isn't your last chance. We're just, the main point of this is to, have to get all this information. So, Diana, it looks like you had a thought. Yeah, I just had an idea because um, yeah. I'm, I'm hearing from two hounders the callback that happens, um, and I have experienced that before. But I think 
when I'm adding the visual aid of some kind is because right now not all hounders are training their dogs with that method. And so what do we do then when um, the hounder, the dogs don't have that callback? And when you ask the hounder to call them back, they actually can't um, and the chaos kind of continues. So um, just maybe some ideas on what could be a visual aid. Or, or how do we make sure that the dogs have the call back, I guess, maybe too. So um, are you saying to include training in, in how to do it? Or I want to make sure I get the words correct. I know this is like a, maybe a separate thing off yeah, of what, yeah, um, yeah, just like how, how can we make sure that there is training with the, the hounds that they will respond to the call back? What I experienced, that wasn't a thing. Um, the dogs didn't respond at all. So um, just wondering how that can be like added in so that we can be re reassured that the dogs are actually trained to do that. Okay. And if I may just piggyback on, I know I'm, I'm not sure if this is the proper process, but I don't want to forget something that Diana said, the visual aspect. I mean, if you don't know what your hounds are chasing, um, not being in visual control, there is there is no control. You can't control your hounds when you don't even know what it is they're chasing. So um, I think that the visual aspect is something that I think is going to have to be incorporated into a definition of control in order to have any meaningful definition. I can't imagine that any attorney would. Um, you know, when you, don't, when you can't even see what your dog's doing, that that would be control. Okay, so um, that's why the visual component is so important. Okay, because tell me if you want me to write something better there. Okay. And we'll keep going and then loop back to that. Um, anybody else have any other thoughts moving around? Okay, Jamie? Yeah, I think training seems to be a big issue surrounding this. And I mean, I know with other hunting, um, hunting dogs, if you're training your dog specifically for one, one game, whether it's bear, coyote, antlers, ducks, then the dog is trained with that particular scent. So if the dog is trained properly, then there shouldn't be an issue. So maybe there should be something in the laws and statutes that state that the dog has to have proper training with mm -hmm. the animal that it's hunting. Mm -hmm. But what happens if some of these hounds also run bear? Like a raccoon hound also runs bear. So the seasons are different. You know what I mean? They should be separate dogs. I mean, if they if they can't if they can't be controlled. I mean, and this might be, you know, a little out there, but um, if if the dog can't be controlled with that specific game, then maybe they should have separate dogs for separate hunts. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know. Some have separate dogs. They have yeah, dogs I know that some people do have separate dogs um, for coyote and for bear hunting. Um, so I don't know. And I know that a lot of people have multiple dogs, so it may not be. Um, OK. Just right here. Thanks. Yes. The only thing I would say just for where we're going with this is visual aid, visual. Basically, you're not going to coyote hunt with hounds. There's absolutely no way you can have visual contact with your dogs when you're hunting coyotes. I don't care. They can be within 100 yards and you can lose visual contact with your dogs. I mean, anybody that's been in the woods like I have my whole life, you know, the ups and downs and the hills and crannies of Vermont, how are you going to see your dogs at all times? Impossible. So we already see which sides we're on, where, where we're going with this. If, you, if the law says you have to have visual contact with your dogs, there will be no coyote hunting mountains. Just it'll be impossible. I mean, that makes perfect sense. There's some areas. Just like it would be with bear hounds. How are you going to see your bear hounds five miles away? Same thing with rabbit. Rabbit dog, mm -hmm. same thing. A bird dog, yeah, maybe you can when you use a bird dog. But you sure as hell am not going to do it with a coyote dog. So I'll make it a separate line here. That in, in, in terms of this, you're, some people are suggesting adding to control of dogs a visual connection with your dog. And you're saying that the fact it's not here, you would support keeping it not here because you don't think no, it's well, possible. It'll end coyote hunting. <laughs> It, you can it would basically pounds if you have to have visual contact. So it's just not going to happen. If, 
<laughs> if if with my hounds, when I let them out of the truck, I'm in areas where the road I'm on is about as wide as my truck. They take two leaps, they're out of sight. So I automatically, I got to tone them or discipline them and put them back in the truck. You're basically saying we're going to stop hunting with hounds is what you're saying if you put them rules in. So I think we're, we talked about visual on both sides. I, I don't if anybody wants to add to that or not sure. I, mean, I think I don't, I, I don't think tonight our job is going to be to come to consensus. I think our, jo our job tonight is going to be to hear all the perspectives um, because if you were to come to consensus, it would be I just want to add one more idea yeah. along with what they're saying is that I think partially in my mind was we have the technology for GPS and tracking. Maybe there's technology that would help with visual aid. That's mm -hmm. all. That could be part of the caller. <laughs> That's an idea. And I guess my question is meeting legislative intent. If we know that the impetus for this legislation was because of hounds ending up on private property, attacking people on public roads, like we saw in Fairley, how is this current definition of control of dogs going to meet legislative intent? How are you going to keep your hounds off of private posted property? And how are you going to keep your hounds, um, you know, from not attacking people like we saw uh, in Fairley, Vermont last year, where a woman was attacked by or coyote hounds or her dog was. So I don't see how this current definition even meets legislative intent, which I think if it doesn't, then it's going to go to LCAR and it's going to be not supported and we'll be back right where we started. So. so I think what you're saying is that the way that this one is written, if it doesn't add in visually, you don't feel it's going to meet legislative intent. Well, only because if you can't see your dog accessing private property, and that was it's written, the legislative intent is written in this, in Act 165, uh -huh. that keep hounds off private property and out of areas they're not supposed to be, um, unless there's a definition of control of dogs that really mitigates that. I know it's never going to, you know, eliminate it completely, then we're not meeting legis legislative intent. I have a question to piggyback that, Brenda. Um, okay, before you do, uh, Chris had a comment. Best things. Legislative intent was a ban. Legislative intent was modified to increase regulation through the Wildlife Board. So we moved drastically where this original bill started. Um, I guess the other just <laughs> side point um, is sight. If you get up in some of the fields of Addison, I can see my dog and he could be out a mile away. He's not going to see me or otherwise generally know where I am. I do understand GPS collars not only have tones, but shock. Um, I also believe, and people correct me if I'm wrong, we now have the technology for callers to know when they're going on private property. So that may be something down the road because that's a cost. If there, there are apps that you can get to show property lines. On apps? On, on your GPS tracking device. All right. To know whether or not you should be there, you should have taken days and days and days and checked every one of those properties to try to find out who the landowner is and get permission from him I, I or get told to stay off. All right. I got an area where I've got 87 people give me permission. There's two people don't want me in the whole world. But because they go around those properties, this year I was not on there, those two properties at all. And I hunted the same town all summer. So it, it works by knowing you have permission, the people who own the land, but when you have land, numerous tracts of land, people live in California, they come here once a year, you don't happen to catch them right. You didn't get permission. So I feel like it's not that personal. Uh, that's the language as I see it in 165 under section three. That the General Assembly, through the rules required that this section, intends to reduce conflicts between landowners and persons pursuing title to the aid of dogs 
by reducing the frequency that dogs or persons pursuing coyote enter on the land that is posted against hunting or land where pursued on coyote with dogs. Specific language is reduced, not eliminated. I'm so sorry, where are you? Oh, you're reading in the back in the section. Yeah. Uh, section three. Okay. Um, Somebody over here. I did, yeah. My question was to the gentleman that um, hunt with hounds um, for the GPS and just wondering if you guys use Onyx or if you have the capability to kind of um, merge those apps so that you can see property lines, but you answered my question. So. I'm glad you answered it because I'm not tech savvy. My 12 year old son showed me where the map thing was. So, you know, I try to keep track of personally so that we don't agitate too much. Another, um, it's not just um, private property. It's also keeping hounds. Um, let's see. Definition control to minimize uh, to harass harm to harass or harm people or domestic animals. So that is necessarily on private property that could be on you know public lands that could be uh, in a road. It could be so that's under so you're feeling that the private property app you, you doesn't go far enough. Well, right. I mean that that might um, help a little bit uh, for posted land or private property. I'm not quite sure how still, um, but the legislative mandate under C, um, a definition of control to minimize the risk of dogs that pursuing coyote enter onto land that is posted, enter onto land where coyote hunting is not allowed, and C, harass or harm people or domestic animals. So that could be anywhere. That's not necessarily on your own private property. That could be anywhere. Yeah. So even the, you know, the onyx, whatever you mentioned, that's not going to <clears throat> address that criteria. Okay. I think we might be done with control of dogs for now. Is that right? Okay. I'm guessing three short six, nobody has any experience. And um just department. Oh. 3.6 just says the yep. department means that the Vermont department Um, let's see, 3.7, uh, department registered dog means a dog bearing a member of identification type. Guessing again that people are with that. Is that, is that? The only question I have is it says one to four. We haven't established the number of dogs. Okay, that's down. Just because it's alphabetical, just wait till pack of dogs. Okay, so so we're saying where it says that the number one is before you might want to well, take Well, dog says it's one to four dogs. But I, I think what you're saying, we're going to talk about the number of dogs in a minute because we haven't yet. We feel like the, the number one through four, it should be that, or if it were to decide on three dogs, it'll be the number one it through three. Say, uh, it should say. But does that, yeah, so so I'm going to just make a note to change 3.7 to um, that last number that we find Does that sound right? So is that is 3.7 borrowing from the current bear hounding regs? Yep. Or is this so this is exactly what the bear hounding regs look like? No, we're uh, one. No. We have six dogs. Yeah. Well, yes, yeah, sorry, not not I'm talking about the tag. But the tag. So what is it? Is it just like a metal tag or something? And it has the person's name on it and contact information. No, I've seen games. They, they have their own. It's it's those are tags specifically issued by the department, or it's got the permit number on it. That would permit registered dog means a dog bearing a numbered identification dog tag, approved or issued by, with the permit holder's coyote dog permit number. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Switch dogs occasionally. I mean, I, you, I know you can't do it when hunting, but if you had dog number one, and you decided to leave dog number one, and that was his collar, you switch that collar with another dog. Oh yeah, you can put okay. your collars on any dog you want, as long well with with bear hunting. If you're trying to follow that a little bit, we're only allowed six dogs. We only have six tags that Fish and Wildlife made That's for us. Too. You put it on there. We also have to have a tag on there with our name, address, and phone number in order to be legal. So we have to have two tags on bear hounds. Yeah, and I think what you're asking is you could put that on a different dog, but not in the middle of a day. Yeah, yeah. you could. Yeah. You should have two dogs at yeah. once. When when we're hunting, we only carry six dogs with us, so we can't accidentally turn a seventh one on. Yeah. I have a question. So are we good then on three point seven? 
Yeah. yeah my, my question is how many how many dogs does it take to chase out a bear or a coyote? So we're gonna talk about the number of dogs in just a minute. When we get down to 3.10 pack of dogs. So right now all we're talking about is this um thing about registration. So can you hold that question? Yes, I'll hold that question. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so 3.8 is GPS caller. Uh, I don't know whether that's something people have comments or thoughts about or not. Question. I have a comment on GPS callers. Okay, well, do you, Jeff, and then, and then Diana has a question. Yep. I believe GPS callers should not be allowed on dogs that are hunting. Be, again, if you are in visual sight of your dog, you have control. You do not need a GPS collar. You know right where he is. Okay. Um. If, if you know where he is, you don't need to take him hunting because you can see whether or not there's an animal out there that he can see. Thank you, so but There's no sense even hunting. You're trying to kill hunting completely. Thank you. Um, I can't remember, sorry, Diana, yeah. yeah, yeah, so these tags are connected to the permit or would be connected to the permit rather than the like contact information of the the hound owner, correct? I want to make sure I'm on the right one. So you were on three point, is that yeah, the one? Are you, are you talking about the department issue tag? Yeah, isn't that what 3.8? Three 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 yeah, oh, okay. the dog tag. Okay, so, so 3.8. Your question is I was just trying to make it clear in my head these dog tags that we're talking about. So you come back to three seven. Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I guess I see it down in three eight too, but yeah, so okay. I think wants to know is it's like if I don't have any hounds, I can't just get a dog tag and then give it to somebody else, right? It has to be for my dog. Yeah. If it's, it's a my, if it's a permit tag, it's you only yeah. well, whoever that is would be the owner of the dog. Like, so I couldn't get a tag, it was right. I couldn't give it to you to put all of your dogs, right? You theoretically could, but you can. all of the onus is on you. Yeah. So if you give them a tag, he goes out and does bad at all. I have a comment on the 3.8. Okay, just, just one sec, okay? I just want to, before you come, I just want to make sure I've gotten this. Is that what your question was? Do dogs have to be specific to the tags? I guess I'm just differentiating the tag. It has to do with the fish and wildlife permit to hunt versus the personal information of the hounder. So, like, if the hound just shows up and hangs out on your property for a little while, you know who to call. Yeah, because I've had that happen before. Okay. I was around okay. for a while, and I just would like to be able to. So, to make sure that the tag includes the, the hunter's information on it. Yeah, like some kind of contact information. Um, okay, and so Anthony, so they have their identification. Yeah, tag right? the we have so tag. Yes, okay. Thank their address you. Name. Okay, yeah. so Anthony. So on the GPS collar um, for the location, I think it's important to have that in there just because if there is a conflict between a landowner and a hunter and uh, the, the landowner basically is just trying to throw the hunter under the bus, if there's a GPS collar on the dog, that can be transferred posed onto a map and prove whether the dog ever crossed that property or did not cross that property. So it's important that the GPS collars are used for that purpose also. Thanks. Okay. Another um, data point on, on GPS collars. Um, there was a study that was done, I think it was by University of British Columbia. I have a copy of the of the research paper that was done on GPS collars. They they malfunction or they they don't work. I think it's like 40% of the time. So um that's that's another I mean, and we could, you know, anecdotally, we could all say, Oh, they work great, never had a problem. Well, this is a research that was done specifically on this issue. Can that, I have a copy of that yes, yep. Um you said they don't work 40% of the time? Correct. I believe so. I think, I'm sorry, did you say University of British Columbia? Yeah, I'll, I'll forward the study. Um, if everybody ran on a better than 40% GPS collar, 
goof up, we're, we'd have a better world. <laughs> Okay. Um, are we good on colors? Then we can move on to that sort of That's the problem. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so now we're on to 3.8 A. <laughs> 3.88. Hunting with dogs. Um, <laughs> the initial means that one or more dogs with Duck tags or on the ground, whether the shooter or coyote or not. So I think keep in mind that when we get to the 310, we're going to be talking about what's the appropriate number of dogs overall. So are we okay with this definition, which just means that hunting with dogs means dogs, hunting with dogs? That's pretty much what that says. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's why. Okay. So 3.8 again. <laughs> uh, okay. And then 3.9, um, legal means or legal method for the purpose of this rule means the taking of a coyote by muscle loader gun, archery equipment, or crossbow. Uh, is that one that people have thoughts or comments about? I wasn't sure. It's again, we're in definitions. Mm -hmm. So Chris, you're good with that? And we're not talking about how we feel about it. We're just saying definitions. Does that sound like legal in general? So we're okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I guess I'm not sure if this is someplace else. A lot I haven't obviously read this whole document, but um, improving animal welfare was also um, part of Act 165. Is there anything in here that would prohibit the hounds from attacking the coyote? So would you, when you say that, are you saying that legal means means that you take it with a gun or archery or whatever, and you would want to define that illegal means that? It's yeah, like I mean, that. you know, we have had yeah, cases I think it's where, implied. yeah, I, I feel like it's implied that that legal means those things. So if it's not those mm -hmm. things, it's not legal. If you look them in 4.2, there's a legal method. Okay. 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 Thanks. So are we okay with we'll wait till we get mm -hmm. yes. Awesome. Um, so then that brings us to 310. A pack of dogs means one to four dogs acting as a unit during the pursuit of a coyote. I was imagining this much more that some people had thought. Um, why don't you take a second for me? Um um, this, I'm sorry, 3.10, we're at? We're on oh. 3.10. Uh, a pack, definition of a pack of dogs means one to four dogs acting as a unit during the pursuit of a coyote. So um, if someone has a thought, maybe we'll start with whoever has a thought and we could just go around from there. So well, we've really established good. the amount, how many dogs you can run. So this is the moment when we're doing that. I mean, pack of dogs should say, I'm not cheating you. In there, unless you know what the law is going to be. I, I is think it we're, four, is it six, is it two, making, is it eight? Yeah, we're, I think this is we're making the law right now. So, so, so this conversation is about what do we think? That's not the correct definition of a pack of dogs. But, but I think what we're trying to do is create a definition for the purposes of this rule. That uh, and, and so we would if we say one to three, then it'll mean. You can't go out with more than three dogs. So if we say one to four, it means you can't go out. So this is the time to have that conversation. But, yeah. but isn't this the, um, if it says one to four, that's mm -hmm. the recommended number of dogs. Isn't this what the department is recommending? Right. So to to Anthony, to Russ's point. Why are we allowed six for bear dogs? I'm not, why aren't we allowing six for coyotes? I'll, I'll capture that question, Russ, Russ, and I don't know if anyone wants to um, take a stab at an answer. I'd well, like I guess I have a question. Um, okay. Is, uh, we're going to hear from um, Jonah and then you, Jeff. So, no, Brenda, then. Go ahead, dogs Brenda. That are, the hounds that are used to hunt coyotes are what, 60, 70 pounds? An Eastern coyote weighs about 40, 50 pounds. Um, I think four well fed, muscled dogs on one coyote is grossly unfair. So, I would like to hear rationale 
as to why anyone would think they would need for foxhounds, what have what have you, you know, on on one coyote that's probably hungry, um, you know. When we turn our coyote dogs loose, if we set four dogs, we may be chasing four different coyotes. We don't know how many. You don't know if it's one. They huh? sometimes they chase two, three, four coyotes. So. Thanks, Russ. I'm gonna. So I'm gonna. I know It's not a matter of what. You're saying. Everybody you're saying running, right? How many times you yeah. run coyotes? You run one. Yeah. Usually, when we run coyotes, there's several that you're running. The dogs may split. How do you control if your dogs are splitting? Well, that's you've, got, you've got enough people that are hunting. You control them. And if you've got five people, three guys are with those dogs, and you, you're always watching them on your GPS. There's no way to know how many coyotes your dogs are going to run. So Probably. by saying you're running one coyote is it's it's ridiculous because it's not going to be just one. It could be two. Could be three. Okay. It might be one. So why don't we capture that thought? Jeff, I think you had a, is it Jeff or Anthony up here? I forgot now. Jeff. Jeff. Jeff, what was your question? Yes, I have a question. <clears throat> First of yeah. all, I used to be a hunter, so I want to know what, when we're talking about hounding, how can we call that hunting? I have that question because I'm confused because this is no, this is, this is a sport kill is what this is. This is sport killing. This is not hunting. I used to hunt, so I know what hunting is. So when you're talking yeah, about yeah. when we're talking about four dogs chasing coyotes all over willy nilly, and guys lined up waiting to kill those coyotes, I don't. I'm I'm waiting. I'm. How is that hunting? Um, is that a rhetorical question? I think it is. <laughs> okay. So no, this is um, this so is sport. It's yeah, I hear, I hear your point. You feel like it isn't sport hunting. Um, I'm going to keep going around. So Jane or Anthony, did you guys have a comment? You're good to go, Jane. Seems good to go. But I think that the, I think that oh, yes, sorry. I do. Um, okay. Four four dogs with um, GPS collars. Men that are armed that have possibly baited or um, have calling. They do various methods to get these coyotes. Four against one is absolutely unfair. That is that is just not, that's not hunting. That's just going out and wantonly killing. That's my that that's how I feel. Um, Jane, do you have a Great. recommended number? One. One dog. Like <laughs> okay. Um, so what I'm going to, thank you. So, Butch, I'm going to go and we'll just keep going around. Yep. But I need, if you could just think about it for a minute, I need a little, or I can get somebody to help me stick these up over on that one. Thanks. <laughs> you got more stuff. <laughs> you got better eyes. Not often. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so All right, Chris, you're in another pizza, pizza. Yeah, get another one. Um, <clears throat> wind's great, and we're all pretending. Okay. Butch. The number of dogs, whether it be two, three, four, one. In order to train dogs to run, they need to run with older dogs that know how to do it. So if you're only allowed four dogs, you can only have two dogs that know what you're doing, and you got two puppies that don't know what you're doing. So you're actually only got two dogs on one coyote or two or three coyotes if it was a group that split up when the dog started their tracks. So you can't honestly say, all the times you've got four or six dogs, whatever the numbers out there, that they're all definite hunters that know exactly what they're doing, because everybody that has hounds run puppies. And they don't know what they're doing until they get a lot of more hunting in. So you would suggest Hounding. that, um, you, you would think that the four number made sense in that case? or you're not I think it ought to be more than four. I'm, I'm not happy with four as a number, 
Um, someone referred to it earlier. We have six as bear hounds. I run young dogs that are not trained every time I go out. So I do not have a full pack of trained dogs. Yeah, got it. And you can't is train it, them unless they're out there hunting. Is that you universally true? Yeah, are you, you can't can train speak, them when they're on a chain. Okay, David? Can you speak for every person that hounds in Vermont that they do exactly what you do? Everybody? Oh, no, I, I'm abnormal. <laughs> but they're more, they're more close to what I do because I learn from older men who aren't. I learned from the old guys that were successful to run hounds. I've run hounds since I was nine years old. I got my first dog. I'm 70. I have successful hounds. Thank you. David, we're going to keep looking around like this. Uh, just I have a question for the hounds, yeah. houndsmen. No with bear, bear will really the tree or the, the dogs will bay them. Coyotes, they're a little harder or faster. Do they? Uh, do you have cases where coyotes bay? No. Would it be easier to bay with six dogs versus four dogs? Yeah. Safer for the dogs too. Well, it limits the amount of. It could potentially limit your run time as well. It, I, is the word you use bay? I'm sorry, I don't know. It, it is, yeah, bay. Okay. Yeah. So that question all makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So. Awesome. I just as I'm learning, these gentlemen, is that. That the benefit of an increase of two six dogs is that the pursuit time could be cut down and less likelihood of entering onto unintended property when the dogs were started. So you're saying if you increase to six, it shortens the pursuit time and less likely to be going. That's what okay. it sounds like talking to the others now. Okay. Yes. Okay, um, I'm almost ready. Chris, I'm going to come to you in just a sec. Um, Hello? Can I say something? Um, I'm going to loop back around to you in just a sec, Jane, okay? I'm just going to keep going in order. So, is that who asked? Yeah, yeah. yeah that was true. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. They're collected units. I hope they're paying you well. I know. <laughs> uh, Chris. These came from the department. Could I just hear the department's view on where the <clears throat> magic number of four came from? Sure. Was it just because it was less than bear hunting? Where did that come from? There's a place to start, Chris. Okay, thank you. Place to start. That's, that's absolutely fine. Thank you. What, what was There's, also a There's a place to start. Uh, was that the average, like, collective response for the survey was roughly yeah. four? Okay. Um, so, so um, to piggyback on something Russ said and Butch said, so one thing, you could have one coyote founder that has, let's say, six dogs, four dogs, and those dogs might split off into three different directions, chasing different coyotes, and you've got one hunter, maybe mm -hmm. two. Again, it goes back to control of dogs. It is absolute, as someone who's had dogs my whole life, spent thousands of dollars leash training using an e-collar, it is absolutely impossible under that situation to convince most people that that's gonna be control of dogs. Yes, Another yeah. point um, to piggyback on Butch's um, statement, you know, and I, I'm, I'm aware of this, you're always going to have, you know, new dogs, green dogs, puppies. That's exactly why we see some dogs chasing moose calves or, or you know, animals are not supposed to be chasing because they're untrained. That's a whole, so it's not like pounders have to go through some formal training and present their dogs to some person saying, my dogs have passed a test, here they all are, you know, can I get a permit to allow them to hunt? There is no testing to see if the dogs are well trained. You've got young dogs that are out there. They don't know what they butch said, you know, they don't know what they're doing. They're following some of the the more um, you know, skilled dogs, but so again, it goes back to control of dogs. There is no control of dogs in these situations. Thank you. Josh. 
Diana. I'm just throwing out a quick suggestion. Um, I've had experience with five dogs on my property um, mauling a coyote to death. These dogs definitely were not trained for callback um, and were clearly trained to kill the animal. So with Butch's um, issue that he's bringing up, just a suggestion to have no more than two. So one that's well-trained and one that's training. That was an experienced pay to that bill. Founder too, someone who's done it for a long time. Yes. So that. Thank you. Uh, well, the HSUS opposes the use of, of hounds for recreational hunting for carnivores, um, which is no surprise. Uh, but in order to fulfill the legislative mandate, we would concede to one dog. And that would be regardless of the number of permit holders who are uh, hunting together. Regardless of how many people are hunting together, they would hunt with the same dog. That's what you're saying? Okay. Um, Okay, thank you. That's great. We're getting there. It's a hard conversation. Bring me in. Russ. Uh, to answer Brenna's question about the dogs splitting, I don't know anyone, at least not anyone I've ever hunted with, that hunts by themselves with four or five dogs or even two dogs. When we hunt, we usually have more hunters than we have dogs. So we may have 10 hunters and five dogs running. And I think that's sufficient control of your dogs when you have that many people. Every one of them has GPSs, has all the controls. And I, I'm sure same thing with you when you hunt, correct? Usually. Yeah. Usually you don't you wouldn't just go out by yourself. No. May I just respectfully respond to that and just say there were six hound hunters on my property that day and four or five hounds and they had no control. Well, um, unfortunately, they didn't have GPS and controls. We do. They did. They did. They had everything that we do. We, had. we have control of our dogs. I just in that case, like, what do we do? You know, there are there are some hounders, hounders in all types of hound hunting that don't give a rip what the laws are. And I apologize for them. We don't have any laws, but that's dogs attack people. Dogs attack people that they don't have control of their dog. So it happens on both sides. I mean, yeah, there's bad actors out there, but do you guys want to most of us are not that, that way? Yeah, so. that felt like a really rich little point of the conversation right there. And I'm just wondering, would you want to add something about what's required for training or what's required to not have bad actors or enforcement? Or I don't know. Do you have thoughts about ideas about how to ensure that that what happened to Danny was we, we already have laws against people breaking the laws <laughs> and it, just like dope addicts, they know it's against the law and they, they get caught and thrown in jail. When they come out, they go get a hit. So what would be, what could be a way, I'm just thinking this is our moment to think of some ideas. Stop hound on them. I'm suggesting, is there an idea to try to keep bad actors out or something else? David said, that's what the law said. That's what we're trying to do. So okay. yes, that would be okay. one way of doing it. Well, what do you think of something? Because I, I feel like that's, a, I, I really appreciate what you apologizing on behalf of the bad actors. And I hear the pain that you're oh. saying, Diana. And I think that this is, you know, something we can work with. So we're, hey. we're, we're the ones that get the blunt of it and get green bat, hollered at, whatever, even though we're doing 100% legal and everything else. But um, my, my question would be, you only have, one dog out there hunting. Coyotes usually are not by themselves. A dog goes out there and barks once or twice. The coyotes get territorial. Two or three coyotes come in and tear up my dog. Who's going to pay for it? If you have control of the dog, you won't have that problem. You will be able to see that happening. That won't be a problem if you are in sight. So I feel like we've covered that stuff. Uh, 
Russ, we're, I think we're back to you. Are, are we? Um, that's what I'm saying. That, that was your point. But we don't hunt by ourselves. Yeah. We, we have as, we as, more hunters yeah. than dogs. I think, I mean, we're pretty well that are going to be done, I think, with this number of dogs thing, but I want to make sure there aren't any more thoughts. So yeah, I mean, I've I got nothing else to argue other than you yeah. put one dog out there alone, he's going to be yanged up on by the coyotes. Okay. That's that. And then um, uh, David, Wes, anything else? Yeah, um, let's see. So, I think it's difficult when we get into anecdotal, you know, examples of because, you know, the, the coyote hounds that mauled a dog last year fairly, there was one coyote hounder. So, I mean, you know, what we hear a lot about, well, I would never do that. I don't. That's the reality of what's happening. So. Yeah. There's a lot of evidence to, to this. There's also evidence to raccoon hounds getting yeah. torn up by raccoons injured every time you put your dog out there. On the scent of a bear, or a raccoon, or a bobcat, or you're putting your dog in danger. That is your decision you're making. Mm -hmm. So to complain about your dog getting injured, that's your decision. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, did I? Yeah. Sorry. Um, Jeff Jane or anything? Um, no, no comments. Yeah. Okay. My comment yeah. is, I know. Um, Founder five years ago who had his favorite hound shot by his best friend pursuing a coyote. So, like they've said, there is danger out there when you put a hound into the field to pursue wild game. It's just a fact. One hound is more than enough to chase out yep. whatever you want to shoot. That's the okay. way it is. And Anthony, did you have a comment? I think are we done on three point ten? No, I'm all change. I'm all set. Okay, thanks. We have hunter education yep. for gun hunting, bow hunting, waterfowl, deer, whatever it is. So why could we not have a component to hunter education in hounding? Yeah. That be part of the permit process? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Also for all hounding, right? All hounding. I guess. They yeah, I mean, I like to go through yeah. a training process with hunter education because we're talking about you know coyote hounding, but I know I keep hearing bird. Someone is out there hunting with their dog and, and flushing up birds. Totally different activity. I would argue that even hunting hair with rat or uh, with with beagles totally different, much different. But yeah. if we're making regulations for coyote hounding, we have raccoon hounding. A lot of these things kind of bleed over. Um. The property owner rights issue. Um, our recommendation was to have this apply to bobcats, raccoons, coyote, and fox. I'm not really sure who hunts fox with hounds, but um, it just seems like we're leaving ourselves to an enforcement mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to build up that. I'm actually wondering, is the department or are there? Manuals available. I mean, because it keeps coming down to training the dogs right? yeah. and how those dogs are trained. And clearly, there's a lot of money in a good hound. You don't want that hound. You don't want vet bills. Um, so it keeps coming down to training, as opposed to under education or something like that. Is there a manual nationwide or that could be put together by Fish and Wildlife to say, hey, these are the things your dog must do? I mean, or shouldn't do, or I mean, this is how you go about training. I mean, you what you learn from an opportunity to start a program and make lots of money. So well, I, I understand there's a law in Vermont State you cannot charge for or educating a hound to run bear, to take bear is the way it's said. You cannot get paid for it. So, unless the state's going to change that law, and then set up a way of teaching my hounds how to run. There, there's a law about training dogs for other people. Yes. Do you know about this? Training I'm dogs quite sure about I'll, I'll take a look at that. About, I mean, about you like taking this. my dog and running my dog to teach it how to chase, in my case, bear. I, I assume what you guys are And then to give it back to me. Because no. you're teaching Correct. to yeah. take a bear. So, which I think, yeah, okay. I was assuming they're talking about training program for the people, not the dogs. Let's see. 
but but who's actually going to do the training because it's just an idea that we oh yeah no no education. but i guess my only feedback to that is that the most seasoned people who are doing this are running into the problems that precipitated the need for this law yeah which is how entering posted property so i i, I like the idea of training but when you have people who have been doing this for decades and they still can't keep hounds off of private posted mm -hmm. property. You're not, you're questioning. What are we, what, what are we training? Yep. Okay. I'd like to suggest that I think we might have said all there is to say about 310, which is backup dogs. It's up there. You can see right behind Josh. And then there's more of it right here. And I'm thinking we could move on to 311. And I'm thinking if we could get all through the threes, we'll take a break. Before we get to four, so just a little bit of a carrot there. Um, does anyone have anything else to say about pack of jobs that that number? Obviously, we don't have any, but I think we've heard a lot of perspectives. Um, I'm assuming that 311 is not controversial in terms of the definition, it's just that relaying packs of dogs means removal and replacement of one dog that's on the trail with another dog. That's what we see. It's a definition. I think it's a good or bad idea. Everyone thinks it's a bad idea, but. Are we good with 311? I'm assuming yes. Right, that's the definition. Okay. 312. Or, I didn't look over here. Are you guys good with it? Yeah. Okay. Um, 312. I thought maybe you'd want to talk about training control collar. Is any family of collars that deliver electrical stimulation? Uh, so do we do we need in terms of not we're not so much again talking about is this a good or bad idea, but I want to make sure we agree by what we mean by it. Training control caller. So, do, do, why don't you take a minute and see if you have thoughts about that? In tone. Pardon? Tone. Oh, do you want to? Callers put out sounds and then you react to sounds as much as they might react to a shock. So, add in the word tone? Yep. I, I believe that's the yeah. appropriate. Yes. Don. Pardon? Sounds <laughs> like dog. Um, thanks for that, Chris. Yeah. We're just going to swoop around, starting with Brenna and keep going. If you have any, any change, any words to change to suggest 312. Um, no, good. I mean, Josh, good. Good, 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 good. Uh, Jane, Anthony, or Jack, do you have any uh, edits to the to 312? I'm good. Yeah. Anthony? I'm good. Uh, Butch, good. Right. Good, good, good. Wow. Okay. Then our last one is 313. Um, unregistered dog. Seems real clear to me. Yeah, we're good. We did it. Okay. We are through definitions. Woo! Uh, let's take kind of like about a seven minute break. I was going to say five. I gave you two more. We just made this only one rescue method. Uh, there's more pizza. There are cookies. Butch, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I told you to get out ground rules on my end, so that's it. <laughs> that's not a question, man. All right. I I know. I get it. I understand. Yeah. It was just, I'm giving you the explanation. Thank you very yeah. much. A lot of time on this. Thank you. I don't see that. 
Oh, Jane, that's what it's saying. It's probably a combination of things. Just a lack of And some of the plus. So, I've always been like, so, yeah, a lot of work is different, but a lot of it's in the organization. Yeah, for my it's just very different. Yeah, we just feel like it's more of a level Yeah, frankly, we can have this as an open box space. Yes, yeah. It's not a good It's not a good Yeah, it's not a good idea. It's not a It's not <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get that. <laughs> all the instructions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually, that's the case. It's like you just have to five steps. Yeah, that's the whole thing. That's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Y
and they used to um, the law enforcement used to go trade he said his counterpart with Marines would light a cigar. He steals and they'd run. He goes, and they'd stop running and that guy's <laughs> and he goes, it was crazy. Well, this year has not started out well for me to buy a but oh, that's a different story. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. It's all good. Everybody's good now, so. So my thought is, every single one of those guys that frequently goes down to apply for a permit, because we're never going to know if I own the dogs, Kathy owns the dogs, you own the dogs, whoever owns the dogs. Every single guy on the majority of those guys are going to become permit holders because they're like, that doesn't change the permit. All of a sudden, we'll say, well, I can't do this weekend. We got kids in. He doesn't want to get hurt. Multiple people are going to apply for permits. I don't know. No, no, no. Those 15 guys need to get out there. Oh, okay. There's some geographical areas that just uh, <laughs> really yeah. the yeah. yeah. islands, you don't see this happening because the lands are so small. <laughs> They're the yeah, right. It seems it's really along the the 
Says I stand up here and say, "Okay, we're going to get started again," and then you sit down. I didn't explain that part. Yeah. Okay. I got one question. Good luck with that. I got. I've got a question. This is a hard conversation. We have a lot of different people with different uh, opinions. And is there a question up there? Okay. I got it. Um, I think we skipped over three one B. Sorry. I think we skipped oh, over. Put it all together. So, did you have a comment about three one B? Well, yeah, saying in there that. Um, can't use uh, communicate with with each other without the aid of artificial devices, radios, or binoculars. Well, I think if if you're participating in the hunt, you can be in direct supervision of the with the permit holder if you use a radio or a cell phone or whatever. So I don't know why that would be limited. Okay. Um. Can I, so can you can we turn on the speaker at all for these guys? A little hard to hear, but I think that um, that what Anthony is saying is if we go back to three one B, and that's my fault. I just did three one all together. Um, he thinks that you sh it to exclude uh, devices like walkie talkies is um, or radios doesn't quite make sense. The, re the reason the reason for that mm -hmm. is so that your hunter doesn't go on the other side of a mountain and run a dog over there while you're running a dog over here. You can get in touch with them with a radio where you can't by talking to them. And I personally don't agree that they have to be right shoulder to shoulder with you. But I've got a very loud mouth and you can hear me four or five hundred yards away. Okay, so this, uh, okay, now I'm just reread this again. It says you're not allowed to use radios or binoculars to be, to understand where your dog is. And do we want to talk about that? I, I'm sorry that we skipped this. Actually, I did. I did. Said it was uh, something we need to talk about within context. And now okay. we have context. And now, okay. Um, well, I think that's fine because you're right. We said we were going to come back to that. So why don't we, be, before we do, has anyone read ahead through four? And, uh, this is going to come up. Or do we want to talk about it right now? Um, I don't see it. Do you know if we're going to get to the part about radios and binoculars anywhere under four, five, six, or seven? No, we're all referring to subcommittee Okay, so then we should talk about it now. Um, so, sorry, sorry that I messed that up. Um, why don't we go up here to. So, um, do you, um, can I ask you, Anthony, to say your point again about? Do you want to do? Um, yeah, I, I just think that by limiting without the use of radios or binoculars or cell phones, I'm assuming. Um, I mean, up here, we're in the Northeast Kingdom, and a lot of times cell phones don't work, but radios do. Um, <clears throat> and we're kind of in a little different situation geographically. Um, so I think a sub permittee should be able to talk with a permit holder by a radio or a cell phone or whatever, if it means controlling the dogs. Okay, got it. Again, visual. Visual is the key. If you can't see your dog, you do not have control. <laughs> I think our, our goal is to try to mitigate as much as possible. That's for an emergency. You know, somebody has a heart attack or, you know, something happens in the woods, you don't have a cell phone or a radio to get the capture to somebody. Yeah, I don't think that's the... I know that's not the intent, but that's the way... Well, if we're serious about control of the dogs, 
can't do it without allowing the use of radio. Oh, I, I absolutely, I understand. If I I've got two dogs running and I see that they're headed for some place they shouldn't be, I should be able to get on my radio and say, hey, so-and-so, number one and two are headed to you, tone them and pull them off of there right away. If we don't have the ability to do that, we're going to have even more conflicts with landowners. That's right. why it's That's ridiculous. You can't handle without the radio. You've got to have a lot of radios yourself. I, I not because that was the point I brought up. Just for emergency. If you're serious about control, you have to allow that. If you're not so serious about control, tell me if, oh, I'm a serious about control. What I've captured so far, how little you use of radio cell phones and a vernacular to make it so that the subfer committee can't communicate with the permit holder to control the dog. Radios are key to controlling dogs and radios. Those are the points that I've heard. Um, is there anything else anybody wants to say about radio cell phones or binoculars? So, we're so I think we can go back to four. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So then, then thanks a lot for, for that question. Um, so we are now at four one. And under so four, the decade period with use of dogs. So now we're at the actual rule. And um, for, uh, for one is licenses and permits. I didn't think you guys were going to have much to say about 401, but maybe I'm wrong. Does anyone see anything? You've got a thought, Chris? Um, what about the landowner? So where should I? Well, the landowner is in some manner involved in the suit. Well, it mentions it there in the last slide, but it's that it does. I'm sorry, I missed that. No, it just says they have to exhibit to the landowner. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I guess not exempting a landowner doesn't need a permit. I'm sorry, I get down in the weeds with some of these. No, I just I think this is the moment to put in some edits because this is gonna be the next draft. So I just want to make sure I'm captured your point. So you think the the landowner needs a well no no what it, right now the way it reads the landowner would be in some manner involved, especially if he gave permission for a coyote owner. So they don't need a, a permit or a license or anything. Even because it says in any manner involved, you That's think that that, you, so you'd say accept the landowner? Uh, I'd throw it out for discussion. Does that do? Do people think landowners who give permission should need a license or permit? Would they be exempt from the license because it's on their own land? Oh. Are we talking about nuisance coyote or a sport killing coyote? Yeah, I wasn't. We're, 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 we're talking things. about licenses and permits, and we're just trying to <clears throat> be clear whether I think the question is should landowners be required to have a license or permit because of the part that says in any manner involved in that, in that first line? And I think that what Josh is saying is no, because they're the landowner and that you don't have to, I guess you don't have to have a permit to hunt on your own property anyway. You don't need a hunting license, correct? Okay. <clears throat> what about a permit though? Do you need a permit? Does a, does a landowner need a bear hound permit to hunt on their own property? Yes. Okay, so then you have to take up, then you have to have that even that a landowner does not need. Okay, so if we had said any person hunting for doing harvesting, or an animator involved taking the coyote other than the landowner must hold. Okay. It would have been great to have this public meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, I just, I just feel like I'm going to need time to really read through here and, and I feel like I'm. I'm sure we all feel the same way. Um, mm -hmm. Like yeah. back and it's hard with the time. Especially when the document um, I, 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 well, right? Sure. Yeah. Positive that after. Oh, correct me if I'm wrong, but after this, what you guys are doing is taking the first whack at it. There's going to be another draft, and then comes all the whole public comment period. So I think you'll get a lot. Of it's like a pin yeah. Sounds like fun to me. <laughs> Okay. So 4.1, I'm sorry, and I understand it's hard to think on the fly. 
Did I see your hand up to me? Yeah, well, we had a similar discussion with the BNP trapping group in terms of landowners and whether they're exempt from, you know, having to, um, you know, get hunter safety to trap animals on there. I mean, I involved in this activity should be held to the same standard as anybody else. I don't think it matters if they're a landowner. Especially since their activity that has allows them to kill an animal but it has animals on their land. I just I don't think that's right. But even more so their activity on their land is going to impact maybe their neighbor. So even more so than somebody else. Right. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Y'all are talking about different things. <laughs> talking about different things. Chris is talking about is a landowner who grants a coyote hound hunter permission to hunt on their property. Should they be specifically exempted from this? It is completely unnecessary. We do not hold landowners to that standard in any other fishing game instance. If I own 500 acres and Butch wants to come deer hunt on my property, I do not need a land. I don't, I'm participating. By what Chris said, I understand what Chris is saying, being thorough, to let Butch hunt on my property. We don't function that way. We've never functioned that way. So, okay. to Joanne's point, yes, which is what Russ came back to a minute ago, is that if a person, landowner, wanted to pursue coyotes with hounds, they would be required to have a permit. Yes? yes. Everybody okay. following what I'm saying? Yep. I spent too much time reading statutes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry, I thought you were. I couldn't be. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, I just. Um, so then, does then I, then should I cut this all? I wrote insert other than landowner. Do we now not think we need to do that? And I wrote landowner should be held to the same standard as coyote hunters. Is that do we do we want to? Have well, it sounds like they are held to this. They already are. Okay, so we don't even need any of this. Great. Saves me a little typing later. Uh, <laughs> Okay, anything else? I think 4.1 then we're good. <laughs> yes, all right. That brings us to 4.2 A, and I think we probably want to separate A and B here. So take a minute and read through 4.2 A. This is not a definition. This is the rule. And the rule here is what our legal means. That is the part that talks about legal means. So, um, what thoughts do we have about that? Chris, we good? Uh, into their possession. Is that unnecessary? Um, oh, into their possession. Just seems like too many words. The person shall not take a coyote. Except by how, how do people feel about that? Do we want into their possession? I don't think it matters. I think what matters is that it's you can use a bow and arrow or a crossbow to kill an animal at close range. It sounds pretty gruesome. Okay, I would okay. say just use a gun. So why don't we start with you, Jane? And then we'll just go around the room. So you're feeling as though you think that this should exclude. Bone arrow or crossbow, everything but the gun. What about muzzle loader? I don't know that much about muzzle loaders. Don't they take a lot of time and effort to work? <laughs> I think the reason for the muzzle loader is someone could be a victim, could be a felon, and they can't possess it. Okay. Um, for so, point of clarification: This verbiage shows up in Title Ten in everything we do. Into their possession. The legal method of take. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Just so everybody knows that. <laughs> that that's helpful. Right here. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, it's fine. Do you have any comments about four point two A? Now that we know that this verbiage is every single lie in the state of Vermont. Okay, 
but um, David. Good question, Chris. Okay, Brenda. Good, 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 good. Jamie. Uh, the HSU is the only support gunshot. I'm sorry. Gunshot would be the only thing that we would support. Okay, so you agree with this point about excluding cross code ability, right? Um, cross. A crossbow or a compound bow, traditional bow, with the proper point on them, is as lethal as a firearm. They open a larger hole. And they bleed faster and die faster for someone who knows how to use that equipment. And something I I want to want to ask, but I don't want to ask because it's going to open another can of worms. You turn two dogs loose on a coyote, they catch a coyote and kill it. Is that a legal kill? Yeah, I think we're about to get to. If you're a control of your dogs, that's a visual. You won't let that happen. Only with a gunshot. So I think that was my question. Or, I'm sorry. That was my question earlier with Twitch's question. Um, I just want to make sure that that's not going to be a legal method. Of okay. So I, I, I think what we're saying is it's not legal for your dog to kill the coyote. Correct. Yes. So my next question would be, is, is it legal for the coyote to bite our dog? Yes. Self-defense. It's a chance to take. Self -defense. It's a chance dog yeah. back and kills the coyote. It's a one-sided fight. You yeah. What you're telling me is you won't want the coyote to fight for its life. You'd rather it lay down and die while you beat it with a stick. Oh, the dog's going to fight for its life, too. Okay, I, I think I'm going to cut this off because this feels like a productive conversation. Our dog's going I think the question, I, I, I'm hearing that we're going both ways on the crossbow bow now. Some people think it should be, some people think it shouldn't. You heard a few arguments about that. Uh, in terms of whether it's legal for, um, I think, can you, Jane, can you silence your mute yourself? Oh, oh sorry. sorry. <laughs> They're telling you to control your dog. <laughs> Good joke. Okay. Um, to uh, the point of whether it's legal for a coyote to kill. To be killed by a dog. I think that's what we're talking about. And I, I believe that that's covered right here. That so it's not this A that says you can only do it by these legal means. Is, is that, do, do you want to help me with this? Is it? You are spot on. That is what okay. it says. Because I'm spot on. <laughs> um, okay. So do we want to talk about that? Is that a yes. question for the warden? Yes. The person didn't okay. kill the coyote, the dog did. This says a person shall not take the coyote, right? So I don't think that qualifies. So do we want to change that word? Sorry, I'm splitting the hairs. No, nope, leave it alone. Oh. <laughs> no, because again, legalized dogs. Welfare, I, believe, I believe animal welfare is part of. I would even say the legislative intent section is improving animal welfare. So clearly, if you have hounds that are bawling a coyote and killing it. To be a hard sell for a lot of people. Can you? I'm sorry. I, I missed your name, Warden. Sean. Sean. Mm -hmm. um, so, what do you think here? Are, are we? Well, I, I understand what Chris is saying, and I can appreciate what he's saying. The problem is, is everything in this regulation, you could apply the same thing to, because uh -huh. you're talking about the actions of the dog, right? We're holding the the hunter responsible for the dog that is running onto somebody else's property what this is all about so to split the hair on that particular one i think you need to talk about it through all of this so we are saying that that it is illegal for a dog to kill a coyote and that, that the hunter should control the dog to keep that from happening yes i think it could maybe like general counsel maybe like an attorney could just review that language to make sure i do i, I hear what you're saying i would agree right because a person you're supposed to be in control of, of that dog. Um, but I, I would want to make sure that that's expressly prohibited in the way it's worded now. It's not. The definition of take is very broad. And it does include things that 
Um, so, so I think okay. that weighs in favor of work. And you say that again, Justin? I said the definition of take is very broad. Okay. And which is one of the reasons why we use that word so much. But do you think so? Okay. So do we want to sweep around and we, we've gotten this comment that some people feel that we should clarify that it's illegal for a dog to kill a coyote and that it's up to their hunter to control the dog and make sure that doesn't happen. Visual do add, not happen. Okay. You know what? I'm going to wait and just go around and order here. So and, and just say pass and you don't have more say than that. <laughs> I just will add to the idea of the dog being trained. I know coyotes are really agile and smart, um, but if we're doing all this training on these dogs, there should be some sort of something to get them away or call them in a way that removes them from a dangerous situation or keeps them safe somehow. So if the, um, you should be able to pull your dog back from the coyote. Well, they can't climb trees, so they're gonna end up Uh, no, but I don't know. That, that piece looking a really skeptical over there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we'll keep going. Jamie? So, adding a broader perspective to this, if we were to make it illegal for the hounds to take the coyote, I feel like there should be something in terms of dog owners in general. If you have a coyote come on your property, and say my dog starts chasing it and then the two dogs get in a fight and my dog happens to kill the coyote. I mean, does that hold me accountable for that? No. I mean, I feel like it's a similar, it could be a similar. I think the word adding there's the intent. So your intent is not to release your coyotes to have your dogs. Think. Your intent is not to have them kill the dog coyote. Okay. The intent is that the hunter thinks and I think that's where this kind of goes back to is, is that it's, you know, if if a coyote is or, or a pack of coyotes, you know, are running, got two dogs that are running, for, say, for example, and they come into a pack of four or five and they start to maul the, the dogs as the hunters are trying to get to the dogs. Um, and in that scenario, if one was to be killed, dog and or coyote, their intent was not to release the sole purpose of you know, killing coyotes. I don't right. think that's the one thing on that language where no one's got a gun. Their their pure intent is I've been training my hound or dog, whatever dog, pit bull, whatever it is they're releasing. You know, I just purely train this to kill coyotes. You know, that's that's something that should be that's not. I mean, I feel like any ethical hunter would be training their dog only to chase the coyote with the intent for you to take the coyote. But there could be certain circumstances where the coyote feels threatened, comes after the dog, and then the dogs get into a fight. And it's just, I feel like there's a gray area there. I don't know that that's. Yeah, I, I think I think a difference with with coyote hounding. I, I don't mean to make a a personal judgment on 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 people, but there's such a hatred towards coyotes. I don't think bear hounders hate bears. I don't think I know deer hunters don't hate deer. The starting point for coyote hounding is just extreme hatred towards coyotes. And I challenge anyone to tell me that's not true. Jay. So, um, okay. <laughs> I, don't hate, but, I don't hate coyotes. But, but, but hold on, hold on one second. So to, to uh, Jamie's point, um, you know, I, I do believe that, that I don't just believe I have evidence that there are coyotes that are injured. I have a photo of one. Um, blood under the coyote, coyote hounders right there, and the dogs on top of the coyote. So, I mean, was that dog in the process of killing the coyote? I don't know, but this is the stuff that's happening. Mm -hmm. So there has to be, if we're gonna meet the, the legislative intent to address animal welfare concerns, we cannot allow the hounds to be attacking these down coyotes or, or killing them. Okay. So- Legalized dog fighting. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I need to- About the animal welfare problem. Around a little I'll, bit I'll tell you what page, hold on. Uh, so that- I know we heard your point, right? Yep. I didn't get your point, and then we'll keep going. Oops. Okay, we'll move back. A support the humane taking. It's on page three, under um, little a. Third sentence from the bottom. That's legislative intent. 
So the intent of, you know, this law being taken. Okay, got it and Bush. I apologize for bringing it up. <laughs> Always gonna be brought up, don't worry. Well, <laughs> you train a dog to start in the dirt, on a track, chase an animal, hopefully to catch it so you can kill it. By catch, I mean bay up or bear's tree. Uh, stop that animal from running. Where is the point that you start reprimanding that dog for doing what you just taught him to do? Because you are reprimanding him when you zap him to tell him to get away from that coyote yeah. or that bear. So you're telling him to do it, but you're reprimanding him because he is. So, That's why it should be illegal and we shouldn't do it anymore. I come right back up to you, Jeff. <laughs> uh, a question on, again, I, I don't hound, but when you're selecting dogs, hounds, mm -hmm. is their the ability and how good a hound bays, is that part of the yeah. genetics? Or Definitely. Uh, I would think that would lean to versus a hound that tends to fight versus a hound that's better at baying. Maybe that's in a, in a breeding selection. Depending on the bear, the same dog will stand there and back off three feet and bark at it. Right. Another bear, he may go in and tackle it. Dog or the bear? Depends on the which bear. older dog trained the younger the bear, dog. The bears, each yeah. bear hunt is different, yeah. even though it's the same dog. I know you can't control which bear you yeah. talking about the dog. Yeah. As far as well, most of these hounds, that's the whole, that's the whole genetic makeup. And there's the whole to, to stop that bear from running any or coyote from running any further. I want to come to Jeff here in just a minute. It feels to me as though this is kind of an unanswerable question. It sounds as though it's a bit, unless and I might turn to you, Sean, if you've got thoughts for us, but it sounds as though there's gonna, it's going to be hard to find language that <clears throat> that draws that draws that fine line. It's, it felt it feels like it's a hard fine line. But I but why don't we but why don't we keep going with it? Um, Jeff, I think you were trying to jump in. Put him on a leash, quit hunting. Yeah, and Jeff, were you trying to say something? Maybe not. Okay, Anthony or Jane? I'm sorry, I'm here. It's just a huge gray area because, yeah. first okay. of all, you need to prove that it actually happened. Yeah. And if, Butch? if, if you're there, and and it's and it's happening. No, no hunter with money invested in these hounds wants a, a coyote to tear into your dogs. And it's it's a gray area that I don't I don't see how you can enforce it because if if a hunter if it does happen, what person isn't going to put a bullet in that animal? And how can you prove that that coyote was killed by the by the dog unless you t actually take the pulse of the animal i agree with you 100 so, yeah it is you a gray area want, you don't want your yeah go ahead if you don't want your dogs put in danger and maybe killed by coyotes or here we go or a coyote hunter which it has done then don't put your dogs out there if you want to be a hunter then go out and hunt you don't need dogs to chase prey out of the ravines to hunt. You can actually go in the ravine and do it yourself. Okay, thanks a lot. I'm gonna I'm gonna loop around this way again. I'll come right back to you, Dave. I think uh are you good? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of just, just wondering your knowingly intent. I kind of like to okay, intent feels like it's the only thing you can do because it feels well, like knowingly. or knowingly. Okay. And knowingly and it's um, not just throwing it out. Sure. And so okay. Brenna, your thoughts. So um, we see a lot of times where hounds will kind of chew up a down coyote. I'm assuming maybe sometimes they're dead, right? So if hounders are encouraging that, aren't you encouraging your dogs to get mouthy with, with the game they're pursuing? I mean, so if you don't want your dogs to be biting at animals they're baying, why are hounders encouraging their dogs to chew on the down coyote because you're, you're getting that coyote you're getting those hounds amped up to get their mouths on that prey 
it seems, I mean, again, I'm, I'm, I've got, I've had dogs my whole life. I've done a lot of dog training. Um, if you Excuse don't me, want dog, your dog, dog, dog training for what? For, from not relevant. I'm going to, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. So, I'm, I apologize. Yeah. No, it's not for her. Home either. collars and stuff. But, um, so I guess if, if you don't want your dogs doing those things, then you shouldn't be encouraging that behavior. So a dog's brain is, oh, there's a coyote on the ground, you know, and you're saying, yeah, go get him. And I've seen the videos. Yeah, yeah. And I see the dogs on the coyote, they're ripping it apart. If you don't want the dogs doing that to a coyote that's running or a coyote that's downed, why are you encouraging that behavior? Okay, uh, I captured that as a question. Uh, I mean, does it? Does I, mean, it I do kind of want to know, but it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Josh, I'm guessing you're good. I'm good. Yeah. And, um, I hope this makes sense. I'm trying to follow this the best I can. Um, the gentleman on the top of the screen, I can't remember his name. Anthony. Anthony. He mentioned earlier that he has like a horn of some kind. Yeah. I've seen a similar thing where the hounder will make whatever sound that is and it like switches the mindset of the dog to kind of turn off and come back or respond in some way. So if that's part of this, does that eliminate like issues of, you know, the dog getting hurt and the animal getting hurt? Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. Okay. So then we're going so back I to the trick. That as a question too. Could you use a horn to pull a dog off of a But how do you know when to correct a dog? Right. Any other <laughs> thoughts about this question of uh, legal? Um, yeah. you, I, I'm just going to say okay. that I think a lot of this comes back to the ethics of the individual hunter. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have bad apples, and then you're yeah. going to have hunters that follow ethics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's just unfortunate that the bad apples are going to ruin it for the people who actually do it correctly and ethically. And I, I just want to add to that because I, <laughs> I agree with you completely, but also some of these bad apples are actually causing an incredible amount of harm to people and people are getting oh, hurt absolutely. and attacked. So what can we, like, there's absolutely. a line that needs to somehow yeah, that's be created. what we're trying to address yeah. in some way or other. Um, I'm just going to keep, if you have additional thoughts to what we've already said. Do I, I just had a question about, like, is there something that references, let's say, uh, uh, the dog does get to the coyote before the hunter does and, and kills it. So what does that mean? Does that mean the hunter can't take the coyote? Or I what, think what they're saying what is in, in practice on the ground, the hunter typically puts a bullet in okay. the coyote so that the hunter can say the hunter killed it. I and, and I don't think there's anything to do about that is what I'm hearing. But, um, I mean, say is we don't train our dogs to kill coyotes. Uh, the dogs we use, you might find one or two, some of the males that will want to fight with them. But most of the dogs, the dogs we use, and actually the females, the foxhounds, they're afraid of the coyote. They love to chase them, but we've even had one dog that you shoot the coyote and the dog will sniff it and that's it, he's done. He just, he wants to just chase it. But there's going to be some dogs that are going to want to fight with the coyote. And that's, I mean, we try to discourage that because we don't like to pay, you know, $1,200, $1,500 to have your dog stapled up from getting in a fight with the coyote because mm -hmm. they fight pretty well. So it's not something we encourage. And there are people I know, I've seen the videos of some of the guys that like to post the dogs chewing the hell out of the coyote. And usually when you kill a coyote, the dogs will, I mean, I'll admit, the dogs will go up there and they'll grab onto them. Some of them more than others, and but that's part of the, that's what the dogs are training. They're hunters. You know, that that's, yep. they're chasing a quarry. That's an animal they're chasing. So so maybe and your point almost impossible to eliminate. Yeah. But we okay. don't encourage it. Okay, thank you very much. That's mouth, mouth, what we call that is mouthing the, mouth. the quarry. Basically. When when they mouth it, you're more apt to turn a dog into a dog that's a mediocre dog, mediocre dog, that will run and will look at them into a dog that runs to catch that animal, not just run to right. chase. So There's what you're saying is you're chase. always behind the dog and you know what it's doing. And you can't do it on a leash, I know. But anyways, to to catch or to chase and catch is two different things yeah. when it comes down to a hound. And you're saying that you want a hound that chases. Not I want a hound that chases Chase. to catch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think we're good. I understand those points. Well I, I have a question for the hound. Um, what's the uh, for like waterfowl dogs, they're soft mouths. They're not, even though they're mouthing a, they're mouthing a bird. They're not destroying a bird. Uh, what is the ground pressure on a hound? Is it, is it severe or is it not? I, I don't. Is it heavy? I don't want them to bite me. 
Depends on the how. Okay. That was that was one, and the other thing too is I know with um, like hog hunting, uh, they will run hounds to bay, and then they'll send in like a pit bull or something for catch. And oh. you know we could mitigate some. I don't know if the department feels about it, but mitigate some issues with you know requiring that it's at least a hound versus you know some type of nothing more than a catch dog like a, a pit bull or something like that. Okay, well, that would be, wouldn't that be bringing in another fresh dog, which is already not allowed? Well, I think if it's part of your four, I mean, I don't know, right? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Just starting, okay. So starting it, right? So we want to say that's not, that you're suggesting us to say that's not. I, mean, I, I don't know if that's possible, but the hounds have an intent. I like run rabbit and, and um, lab has a tent to retrieve them. Waterfowl. So the question is, could we specify that it is or is it okay to have right specific, you know, like these are okay. the these are the, the dogs, if you will, those the breeds of dog that would be allowed. Um, I don't know if that's okay. do you guys mix? I, I have no idea. Okay, just a thought. Okay. Could a lot of mongols could tree a lot of bear, tree a lot of coon, collies, labs, sauces. Okay, I've, I've had some. Because I'm just so intent on us getting done by 830. Yes, I know you are too. Um, Steph, did you have a different thought from what you said before? Okay, so then I think uh, I think we might be done with 4.2a. Yeah, okay. I was guessing that 4.2b might not be one of the many thoughts about it, but take a look and see what you think. That's just saying you have to have a license if you're from So are we going to do that one? 4.2 B, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Then that brings us to 4.3 A. Um, a person shall not take a coyote with the aid of dogs unless the person is able to the dogs. We've covered a lot of this already. Um, but is there, and so, you know, I think that'll get incorporated, but I want to see if you have additional thoughts about. Um, ah, yeah. I guess it's a, it's a thought and it's a question. Mm -hmm. So if you have hounds that are trained both on coyotes and bobcats, let's say, how do you keep your hounds from chasing bobcats out of season? This is just an information. Yeah, I mean, I guess most most hunters will look at a track when their dogs bay bark on it to let them know there's a a dog, a coyote, or a cat, or a bear just crossed the road here five minutes ago, twenty minutes ago. They're usually in a truck. They'll bark. Most hunters take a certain dog out of the truck, put it down, and find that track. At that time, you know whether it's a coyote or a cat or a house cat or another dog or whatever, if you know tracks, and then you release them on that track. What if the hounds on that track that was initially set for a coyote ends up smelling a bobcat track? I mean, what's going to stop that hound from... I'm sure this is an informational question. So well, anybody know the answer? There's usually a significant difference in the, in the scent. Yeah. There's more yeah. scent in a coyote than a bobcat. Okay, so I th and I think that Brenna's question is if your dogs are chasing a coyote, might it switch over and start chasing a bobcat? If they were trained on both. If it was trained on both. Very <laughs> rarely would that happen. It's it's just not in the dog's nature. If he's if he's, he's going to chase the, the stronger oh, no. scent. That could be fresh. What I've heard <laughs> is hounders, handlers, let older dogs train younger dogs. So who's to say what they're going to chase? Because we've trained the most older guys, dogs. Most guys won't put that much money into hounds if they're going to run trash. At that point where a, you most, can't trust a hound, they they usually will become a house pet. Okay. I think that we're done with this one. I, mean, I don't know. Is that sure. Yep. Um, Anything else that anybody wants to say about uh, the Maryland? But 4.3a. So uh, 
you know, it's the person shall take a cutting with the heat of dogs unless they're controlled to go. I think we've talked a lot of earlier in definitions about what we have by control of dogs. Does anyone want to add anything to that to pull about 43A? Okay, I mean, if we've said it, that's good. Um, 43B um, and 43C seem to me to both be. Uh, that I didn't think you'd have much to say about it, but am I right about that? So the fortune be that you're not going to have an unregistered dog, fortune C. You're not gonna um with the aid of yeah, it's about tags and stuff like that. So are we are we good with those? Um on C right there, yeah. that answers the question about the dog tags that we had a while ago. It it says a department registered registration dog tag and a metal identification nameplate with a person's name, address, and phone number on the dog's collar. So that goes back to two two metal tags that identifies a dog, one by his permit number and one by name, address, and phone number. So let's go to 43D. Um, a person taking a coyote with the aid of dogs will only take that coyote with a pack of dogs as the friend of this rule. Nobody's going to hunt or take a coyote by relaying any. I think uh, that that was the idea of you've got your set pack of, pack of dogs and when they get tired, you bring in fresh ones. But that's what this one means, right? Do we have comments about that one? I think I heard before that everyone's good for that. Make it a fair fight. Okay, so that, that brings us to 43E. G says it's about hunting together. So let's very read that one. I can imagine that the part of this that you might not agree about will be this part that says the eight of more than four dogs. So I think we haven't agreed about a number yet. So right. assuming that we've already talked about that, that whole thing is going to need to get addressed. Is there any other part of 43E that you have questions about other than the number of dogs? I think we don't have to discuss that anymore. We've, we've got every work on. Basically, they're saying if you hunt with other people, your pack still has to be the size. It can't be more than whatever size we agree. We agree. Okay. So are we good with 43? Yes, yes. Josh, I'm guessing you're good. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that takes us to five. Yes, we're doing amazing work. Okay, so five. In seasons of shooting hours. So, I want uh, you can read your pilot dog training season, June 1st to September 15th, all dates inclusive. And it's only in effect if there's a training non residence home state. <clears throat> um, can I say something about this? Why don't you start, Jane, and then we'll go around for you. All right. Um, June 1st through September 15th, they're raising their pups. I mean, that's very, very intrusive in the life cycle of, of a breeding pair. And it seems really unfair to take them away from their from their puppies to train your dogs. It seems when you say that you're meaning coyotes, I'm assuming, right? Like the coyotes are raising their pups? Right. <laughs> um, I'm not even I mean, don't coyote hounders typically train in the or run their dogs when there's snow? Yep. 
I mean, so, I mean, why are we even a, hound, a coyote hound training season, June 1st through September 15th? I mean, how would that even? Enough. <laughs> it doesn't seem like. It's a statute. Old dogs. I know that's a statute for other um, fur bearers and, and bear, but I just don't know how that would. I mean, why not? If they want to train. You know, their hounds, they can train them during the legal hunting season. Okay, so that's sure, well, well, like, sure we got these guys for sorry. So, um, Jeff, did you have a thought? Yeah, fish and wildlife follow science, then we're going to have this season, October, November, and December, and we're not going to train chasing coyotes. They don't need training chasing coyotes. Like the butch, the older dogs train the younger dogs. Okay, so, so you suggested. Um, your your change that you're suggesting, Jeff, would be no training season at all. They're not gonna Strike do five one. Both season and all. Season October, November, and December. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not understanding what you're saying. So you're you're striking five one. You're saying there's no dog training season, and then you're keeping the hunting season would be October, November, December. Yes. Correct. Okay. Um, uh, so how do other people feel? What? We're going to go with Chris and then we'll loop around with Chris. I think we can sing this for a bit. Yep. Brenna, we'll come back. Um, yep. So I, I don't want to, you know, debate the hound training mm -hmm. point because I just, I don't think, it, I think it's a moot point. So I would recommend striking that for sure. Um, the coyote hunting season, I think it would make most sense if it, mirrored the trapping season, which is the fourth Saturday of October through the end of December. Um, but I, I do have to, that's just my initial thoughts. So you're saying, I'm, I'm sorry. Yep. So I, I don't. Season, you're, they're suggesting October, November, December, and what are you suggesting? I, I agree with them. Okay. Yeah. That's what science says. Uh, we have a thought. Yeah. Let's take notes so we combine five, one, and five. We are at this point. Yes. Sorry about that. I, I'm just having that same problem myself. <laughs> Thanks for taking notes. Um, oh. Let me just catch up in the notes and then we're going to go to job. Okay. I'm good. I, I'm good. <laughs> 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 Great. No. Frank, November, December. Well, Grand Isle County, yeah. too. Okay. Yeah, Diana. I'm from someone who lives in an area where um, during the summer months that we're talking about, uh, <laughs> constantly has bear hounding and coon hounding, um, typically, all hours of the night, many, many days, especially on the weekends. It's so disruptive to our neighborhood, um, no matter how far they are, because you can't, I mean, the sound of a hound dog is really intense. The, Putting coyote training on top of that seems so intense to me. Where maybe it could be combined in somehow with the like fall or I don't know. Just I can't imagine having all that training season going on with bear hounds, coyotes, and then coon hounding in the cornfields as well. Again, we're talking about sport killing. How much yeah, training? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm going to cut you off till we get. He's good. Okay. Um, okay. till we, I'll tell you when we get to you. I know it's hard for you to tell because you're not in the room. Um, okay. Uh, and Jamie, um, just to piggyback somebody's comment of there, there should not be a training season. I mean, I think that defeats the whole purpose of what we're trying to do here because we keep coming back to the point that there needs to be more training. The dogs need to be trained. They need the hunters need to have control over their dogs. So if we don't have a training season, what are we doing here? Um, so I think that there should absolutely be a training season. I think we just need to figure out the proper dates for the season. So you don't care when it is, but you think there should be one. I'm not saying I don't care when it is. No. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> But you're not advocating for a certain time. I don't think it should saying. be during the actual hunting season, though. Yeah. I mean, I know that that kind of makes sense because that's when they pick up the track and the snow. But at the same time, I feel like I haven't quite gathered all of my thoughts on this yet. But 
I feel like that could create more issues if you're trying to do training during the hunting season. Yeah. I, I, so I, I think your main point is that you think training is important. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're in agreement with changing the hunting season October to December. Okay. Russ. Okay. First, to the non hunters that are in this room, I don't think the department is going to want coyote hunters running hounds during archery yes. season in October, deer season in November, and December. I don't think deer hunters are going to like having coyote hounds running. I mean, it, that that is ridiculous to think you're going to change the season to October, November, December. After deer season is when traditionally the coyote hunters run with the hounds. That's the time when we get the snow, we run the hounds. There's no way in hell you're going to run coyotes during deer season, and it's just going to it would create so many issues for fish and wildlife. I'm sure you don't want. Us running hounds through the woods while people are trying to bow hunt out of their tree stands. Okay. Uh, so that's that's ridiculous. To even that's think of that. not training it. season, I agree, is a training tool. We do need to have a training season. Whether those dates are the dates we use, I'm not sure, but they do need some training season. It needs to be outside time when people are deer. Okay, so we need a training season, but it's not during deer hunting and it's mm -hmm. not during. And coyote pound season cannot be during deer season. That's I heard that, but yeah. I want to make sure. You think That's the true. training season could be the same as the hunting season for coyotes or not? Uh, no, I think it needs to okay. have a separate time earlier in the season. When do you currently train your? To be honest with you, most, most of the guys don't do a whole lot of training, but if we did it, it would be probably in July, August. If it's, I mean, it depends. If it's really hot out, a lot of times you don't want to run your dogs when it's really not the best time of year to do it. Um, but to say to not have it, to not allow people that opportunity, I think you're taking away some of the control issues we talked about where you want people to have control of their hounds when you've got to give them, give them some time to do that. Okay, thanks a lot. Butch. I'm right on board with him. The more training, the better. Doesn't need to be a whole year. And a guy with a hound would be stupid to take his dogs in the woods when there's deer hunters out there. My, none of my dogs go out when there's people out there with firearms. Yeah. David. Uh, as far as the hunting season goes, uh, I think these dates are good. The breeding season is during this time frame. We hunt deer during the breeding season. Uh, so I don't think that's a problem at all during these, this time frame. Uh, question for the houndsman on the uh, training stuff. Uh, does training include, I'm assuming it would include recall practice with the dog. So just because you're training doesn't necessarily mean you're out running coyotes. Sure. Okay. Some people don't even use bags to train. With scent so on. you could use a, a pelt to, yeah. to train your dog. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily mean you're actually out running coyotes. I mean, we've, we've trained dogs for, I don't even know how many years. Okay, through the, go ahead. Through the, Pardon? It's your turn. Go. Sorry, I was just making sure that uh, that Crespin has something to say. You go. Uh, so we've we've trained dogs. I don't even know for how many years through the summer months. Um, and I mean, I, I would assume most people don't even realize it's going on because it's it's usually done in a time of. It's usually started in the evenings, and and goes till the the morning, and then it's over with. Um, so if you, if you want to have control of the dogs, nine times out of 10, when, during training season, there's no firearms involved. Nobody's, um, you know, hunting them at that point, even though it, it's been legal to for, I don't even know how many years. Um, but that's when you, you're getting control of your hounds. That's when you're teaching your hounds to come to you, to, to obey what you, what you want to do. So if you take that that season away, then you're just asking for problems or more problems down the road. Um, and it, like everybody said, it can't be done during the deer hunting stretch in the state of Vermont. I mean, that's that'd just be crazy. Um, so there needs to be some type of training season. Great. Thanks a lot. Um, Jane, did you have any thoughts about five point one or five point two? Um, I would like to know when, what dates 
they would suggest training take place then. Oh, that's right. We already we started with you. I forgot. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yep. But okay. I, but, but it. I heard. I heard July August is what I heard. Uh, and in the evenings with no guns and not with no real coyotes, just pups. Which I think is what I heard. Okay. Uh, okay. Are we good with five one and five two about the seasons? That's a lot of really good information. I think we all just learned a lot. I did just learned a lot from listening to you. So thanks. Um, five three. Um, I didn't think we would have that. Doesn't even have to do with us really, right? So we can skip that one. Five four um, is the same thing, I believe, for all hunting. Is that right? So I'm not sure that was up for discussion either, except for raccoon. Okay. So are we good with five three and five four? So this just means that the coyote hunting, the season will remain 365 and just the dogs that there would be a regulated season. Right. That's what that means. I'm not sure. Um, Can somebody yeah, clarify? Yeah, the regular coyote, you can shoot a yeah. coyote year round, right. just not with dogs. Okay. Okay. So we're good with 5 3 and 5 4? Mm -hmm. Is 5 4 applicable to? To the training season? That's a good question. Because he's saying, he's saying they do it in the evening. Yeah. It's cool during the summer. Right. right. Your dogs aren't going to have to eat. Right. Yeah. Good question. The bear and um, dogs born in the summer. Do we want to address that? So I, I think that is a good But it's question. also has that. Just that with me as well. Thank you. That legality mm -hmm. of the hour. So. so the training is with no guns and no real coyotes. It's about being out in the woods with pelts or whatever to just get them. So the question is, are in this 5.4 should legal hours for training be allowed in the evenings if it's going to be in the summer? If they're just doing drag, are you saying that's not? Go ahead. No, uh, there was somebody talking about training with drags, but no one said not training on live coyotes. No. I don't believe anyone said that. No. Ah, that was just my projection. Okay, so in that case, okay. Um, so do we, I, I, maybe you can help us with this one, Sean. They're wondering if the legal hours for training could be different from the legal hours. So, yes, it certainly could be. There's a little bit of clarification here in that the legislature has regulated the hunting with hounds on everything else besides coyotes before right now. And there is legislative intent that goes back to 1961 that was most amended recently in 2013, where they set out the training season for other species. What is written in here goes along with what is written for the other species, generally speaking, for the training season. So, had a lot of people talk about legislative intent. I don't think we can argue that there is legislative intent on the training of hunting dogs. Okay. So, and yes, there is a difference between the training and the hunting. And in that, it does say sunrise to sunset for bears in particular for the training season. So, would that happen here? Absolutely. It's just there's this has been established with other things before. before that is all I'm trying to point out. Okay. And, and I think I captured it wrong here then because I thought that they were suggesting that. Training could be in summer, even though that's when the coyotes are raising their pups, because it doesn't involve coyotes. But it oh, does. No, that is what was said. People did say that. I'm just offering some where this where this proposal came from. Okay. So okay. So so the argument for that I wrote down here for training being in summer well, it doesn't involve coyotes, and, and it's just in the evening, so it's not a problem for people. And people don't even know it's happening. Did, would you say that's potentially not a true? Fact? With the exception of it doesn't actually involve coyotes. Okay. I don't think anyone really, I don't think anyone said that. Okay. I just heard something about pelts and okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I think you're saying, if I heard you, that we, that, that when we say here legal hours, it's going to be for both training and hunting. To, to Wes's point, he was trying to make sure that it was added to training. So the training wouldn't be allowed 24 seven. Okay. So even if it's summer, it's obviously you can go later to the evening, but still, okay. How do people feel about that? Which I think what, if I, sorry to be confused about that, but I think what we're saying then is that the 
timing the legal hours for pursuit of coyotes and dogs. And I think 5.4 could say whether training or hunting would be this. Pursuit was a broad, okay. you know, so I just wanted to have clarification. Okay. Um, Okay, any other thoughts about 5.3 and 5.4 or 5 at all? Right? So we have 25 minutes and all we have left to do is 6 and 7. That's oh the piece of cake. We totally can do that. Yes, all right. Um, in 6, the only one I kind of thought you guys might want to talk about was 6.1. The others seemed as though you might not. So I might be wrong about that, but take, take a look at 6. Um, see what you think. How much easier do you want to make it? How much easier do I want to make it? People are looking kind of tired. Well, we're oh. talking about hunting. We're talking about baking on the animal. <laughs> Kind of ridiculous to me. Let's think about it. Okay, so you're all, I, I think, what, are you speaking in, in favor of not using bait? No, Commissioner has, has pictures of bait piles around where I live. It's absolutely abusive. It should not be allowed. It should be illegal in every hunting scenario. It is. Okay, so, so just, Jeff, just to be clear, I think you're saying that you agree with 6 1 as written. Is that right? If it's if that means being illegal, that's what I agree with. Okay. Uh, um, why don't we start then with you, Joanna, and we'll go around. Uh, just a question. So this is only in the instance when you're training. So it would still be okay to debate while you're hunting. Uh, um, you're right. I misread that. Okay. So nobody can use bait to attract coyotes for the purposes yeah. of training a dog. It might be in the typo. What should it say? It should say baiting is illegal. Yeah, thanks a lot. Taking. <laughs> um, oh, for the purposes of what should it say? Taking. Taking. A spell check. Okay. Training training. So it should say no person shall place bait to attract a coyote for the purposes of taking coyotes. Yeah. Okay. That encompasses a lot. Okay. Any other thoughts about six one? I think it's good. Is that that? Okay. Question. So, just Mark. clarification. Are you saying taking of coyotes with dogs or any taking of coyotes? Well, this is only about dogs, so we should probably make it say taking of coyotes okay. with dogs. Okay. Coyotes with dogs. So, thank you for that catch. I would say any. So this has nothing to do with training. It's only taking. Okay. So we're good with 6-1 as amended. No person shall place bait to attract coyote for the purposes of taking coyote with dogs. Okay. 6-2, um, 6-3, why don't we why don't we go down through? But I think most of these you probably don't have much of an issue with. Um, no use of dogs. So 6-2, are we all good with that one? You're not gonna basically run out your dog, take a coyote? I'm just, what, what's the intent? I mean, if I'm a landowner and I'm having a problem with coyotes and I don't have dogs and, hey, Twitch, gas money, would you come over and deal with this coyote? Is that bartering? Yeah. Uh, what, what, what are we trying to solve here? So I'm going to turn that into the commercial department. <laughs> coming from the bear. Say that. So it's coming from the bear. He's answering. I'm sorry. I apologize. It's coming from the bear roll. Basically, it's illegal to do that. 
for a bear houndsman to do all of those things for their services. So, so it's, it's the same intent here. Well, so Chris's question was, he's got a coyote problem. Can he give butch gas? I, I've got to say, you know, with the, and I don't mean to cross species here, but with bears and bear hunting, farmers want those guys there. And maybe it's just for their fun, but if uh, come and deal with these bears in my cornfield and I'll give you gas money, that's bartering. And, yes, and, and that would be illegal. And the department, oh, the anyway. department's paying $200,000 for deer damage. I can only answer so many questions. Please. <laughs> 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 um, do we want to talk about that? That not even worth um, so that that would actually um, prohibit anybody who is. I don't know if this happens in Vermont. I know it happens in other states kind of operating as like a, a guide because um, there are people who offer like guided coyote hounding. Um, I believe it would in, in other states. I, I just I just want to make sure that is the purpose. OK, so OK, good. OK, so can we reword that if for some reason a property owner is having a a problem with a bear, a coyote, and asks a friend with a hound to come over and take care of the problem. In this, for coyote, you can. You can't no, do that no. without baiting. Baiting yeah, just Jeff, breaks in. Jeff, Jeff, we're not okay. talking about baiting anymore. We've moved on to 6 2, and now we're talking about bartering for the use of services. And I, I'm hearing you suggest that you guys question, and you might want to say, that you might you don't like am I hearing that you have strike six two? Or no, what am I, I hearing? Think. Although you said the purpose is not to kill guys, so you could maybe we can state that the purpose of this is to not offer guiding services. So you want to not offer why don't we go around? We'll start with Jamie and you can say your thoughts about this whole question of whether we think that you should be able to barter uh, with Kai Kai hunters. So um up for guiding. Um and do I do you have a thought about this? I'm still kind of getting hung up on the language here. Um, what it actually means, but yeah. Um I'm gonna just turn to the department. We're a little bit struggling with this. Do you guys have it sounds as though there's intention to maybe change this from four hunt, four coyote hunting with dogs to make it so you could barter to have people come deal with the problem you had in your farm, but take but eliminate guiding services. Does that feel like each, is it worth us having this conversation? I have no idea. I mean, I it's think not. We've come to resolution on that. Yeah. Pardon? This that's still on the table for input and discussion. It is okay. Great. Talking. That's my question. Okay. The bear issue has been settled a long time ago. We're not talking about bears. No. Yeah. But that's where a lot of these to get the dialogue to this point. We adopted it. Brendan noticed right off the bat. Many of the regulations were for bear hunting with dogs. Right. So it's still it's not good input. I'll be still here. And what you're saying is it's still on the table. That was my question. As all of them, we want, we'd like to get the input of people here, like you're asking. Okay, awesome. So why don't we keep going around, Russ? I think the language is perfectly fine. We've had this for years, and I have no problem with it. If if, if the farmer calls up and says he's having a problem with coyotes and wants us to come hunt on his property, we'll gladly burn all our own money to go do it. Believe me, it's not a problem. I, and, and I. I think the department, that's what they, they're trying to keep it away from people offering guiding services or illegal guiding services, what they're trying to get away from. I, I, I agree with you. Should and you be, keep not having to be able, You should be able to fire to those services. Okay. Thanks a lot. How about for you, Bush? Uh, a houndsman would be crazy to tell that farmer I can't come because you can't, you can't buy me stuff. Yeah. I'll go for free knowing there's a bear or a coyote right there so I don't have to hunt for two hours to find a track. So I guess I'm OK with the language. That's OK, uh, Jane, we're talking about five, um, talking about six, two. And do you have any thoughts about that language? I just stepped away. How about you, Anthony? I'm I'm good with it. I think I didn't get a chance on the six one to comment though. Um, oh, sorry about that. 
And I think as far as baiting goes, if a landowner allows it, it, it would be okay on that property. Um, is that a, how do we, um, we can go back to 6-1. He said, you're hearing that. He's suggesting baiting is okay if it's on your own land. I would agree with that. But I mean, if the, if the, if the purpose is to, you know, keep coyotes and fisher and other, you know, raccoons, skunks off your property as a farmer, why would you want to bait that property with the same exact livestock? that you don't want them to eat. I mean, so baiting is just bad for so many reasons, because you're also providing nutrition to other animals that you're not hunting. They're gonna end up probably having a larger litter size. I mean, baiting is just bad. In most cases, you don't have to bait. Most of the farmers will take the dead cows and pile them up out behind their barns, out in the woods, and you just run off of there. You don't have to place the bait, they do it for you. I'll send okay. you some big pile pics, because you tell me they don't have to bait. But we don't have to anyway. We got plenty of. Uh, plenty do, of we, do we? Do, do, I'm going to keep us at six one, so we can go back to six two. Do we? Do we feel comfortable with the language for the purposes of taking coyotes with dogs, or do we want to say except on your own land? No bait. I wouldn't. I don't like the exception. No. Other people do that. So you're fine with it. Okay. I guess I have a question as far as law. So yeah. Just because you didn't place said bait on land. But you know that there's a dead deer or whatever, something just got hit by a car there or whatever. Now all of a sudden you're using that that dead deer as a as a baiting station, even though you didn't place it, would you still be in violation at that point? Because now you're you're running off of essentially a bait file that you know is there. So there's no person shall play. I, 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 I just language shall not shall no person shall play. Shall not place for the purpose of taking coyotes. So I think you're with okay. You're okay. I, I'm just I was just curious about that. Yeah. 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 I, guess I, I think that you could just end that sentence with coyote and strike the rest of it. No person shall place bait to attract coyote. Period. Thank That's, you. Well, actually, what we suggested, Jane, is we're going to say for the purposes of taking coyotes with dogs, because that's what this is about. But you're right, we're ending just about there. Okay, so I think we're back to 6-2. We're talking about this whole question. Some people are just liking it how it is. Um, other people want us to specify uh, that it is um, just about guiding services. So um, I think I think we're, oh, Jane, we've just got to use. So Anthony, did you have any other thoughts about 6-2? No, I'm I'm good, but yeah, I'm good. Okay, and Jeff, you're okay with that? Yes. Okay, okay. Then why don't we, um, let's look quickly. I'm so hopeful that we still can be done by 8.30, uh, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna miss any key points. So look at 6.3. That just says you're not gonna have an unregistered dog. I gotta believe everyone's cool with that. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, 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 yes. Great. Yes. Uh, six four. Um, you if you apply for a dog permit to allow a non-resident coyote dog owner to hunt for the aid of dogs, that's clearly illegal to me. But have to, have, do people have other thoughts about that? We good with that? Yeah. Okay. So we're good with six three. It could be six four. Six five. Um, it is you have to have a pretty lethal bow and arrow if you're going to use it. Mm -hmm. Is that? Yes. Okay. Um, which brings us to seven. <laughs> reporting. <laughs> We're so close. Uh, reporting. Seven, one, A. I thought you guys might have some stuff to talk about about that, but I wasn't sure. So um, read that one over. Um, oh, oh, it's just 7.1. There's no A. So, who has a thought about 7.1? Um, yes. So, I guess this is the question for the department. Um, do you plan on taking up the coyote petition that would impact 
all coyote um, hunting separate from this? Yes. Okay. That will be taken up in the future. Okay. 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 On the board's list. Okay. Board okay. Okay. Just in case you don't know, I asked what she's asking. It was a petition. Just from, well, it was just from Vermont Coyote Coexistence okay. Coalition. To have a um, closed season of coyote for five years. Gosh, anything about seven more? Nope, good. you're there. Diana? Good, good. Diana. Good, good. Good, good. Good. Anthony? Anything about seven one? Well, the, depending on, on how they're, they're planning to report them. I think our wardens are pretty short staffed as it is, and I, I don't see there's a need of it, but um, I guess they could do it online or something. Okay, so report it, men are required by the commissioner to leave some room for that there. Okay, Jane, uh, seven one. Yeah, I think it's important to understand how many coyotes are being killed every year. I think it's, I think it's a good, a good plan. Good, and Jess. I think coyotes should be reported just like deer. They should monitor the health of the coyotes that they're taking. Everyone should be brought in. Everyone should be infected. They should take the teeth. They should know if they're pregnant. The whole line down the road. They should all be reported in person. Uh, so you're suggesting in person, not just this says report the Not online, not saying I shot three coyotes. No, in person, bring them in. Have them all checked. Just a, a data point. I know some people are are, are chuckling, but um, other states like New York State, um, because there is there has been um, eastern coyotes that hunters thought they were killing or hounders turns out to be um, wolves. So there is a concern about eastern or wolves recolonizing in New York State and Maine. And so there is more of an interest to know what kinds of animals we're killing. If you if you kill a 60 pound, 70 pound uh, you know, coyote, that most likely a lot of wolves. So I think that's why it was Jeff or, or, or Jane who recommended it. So some people think just reporting online or whatever the capacity the department has, some people think doing a more detailed in-person report where data, health data can be taken. Yes. Very deep. Um, last, great. Last one on our list is 7.2. And I got to believe you're going to keep us in time. Am I right about that? Um, I'm just so, curious, like, what do people do that now? Like, what would no coyote car? Oh, is that was this all taken? Yeah, okay. 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 I have a question. Well, I have a question. If we don't bring in coyotes to report them after we kill them, where are we going to dump them? Mm -hmm. Another rhetorical question, I think. So, There's one we, out. okay. Does anyone have a, um, anyone have a specific comment about 7 2? Okay, you guys, I just want to give you all a virtual high five. Great work, forgiveness. We got a lot of work done tonight. And we did it with seven minutes to spare. Um, so I'm going to type these notes up and I'm going to give them to Chris. And he's going to give the captain and other things that happen. Um, Mark, to, not to put the forward on the spot, but if we want any closing comments about where, what, what to expect that you sort of said in the beginning. Well, well, can I think, right? I want to thank the folks tonight. I, I thought it was very informative. And as much as I heard about Kyle for probably three years, I didn't want to talk about information tonight. And made me think a little bit about hunting coyotes and um, so much about that. So, so thank you all for um, saying, you know, we allow the like, opportunity for public engagement. Yes, and we'll most likely intend to go through a rulemaking process with the board. I'd like to see us get there by March, and we'll probably combine this effort with best management practices for traffic and, and strengthen our program. So, yeah, for the department, I can't thank you a lot. And Delia, you did an awesome job. Thank you so much.
Thank you. 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 Thank you.